I am trying to pick out a book for my airplane ride because I'm moving to New York. I haven't really processed it. I feel like I won't process it till I'm like standing in New York next to a pile of trash, but it'll be exciting. I feel like it's time for a little bit of change. I've been in LA for three and a half, almost four years now, but I'd never really quite felt at home here. I think every small town kid kind of has this idea that like, you're gonna move and like all of a sudden like your life's gonna open up and you're gonna like fall in love and like have all these experiences and like I think maybe that's true to some people. And then I got here and everyone was beautiful and perfect. I couldn't be like frumpy biology kid. Like I had to figure out how to seem normal. It's so embarrassing to be alive. It really is. And everyone looks at you and you're like, I'm looking at you too, but why are you looking at me? I was named after Conan the Barbarian, if you can't tell by how barbaric I am. I know, I know, I'm really barbaric. Yay. So when I was working on Kid Crow, I came here like every single day and just like wrote for hours and I'd like to sit by the window because I could like stare at people as I walk by, which is nice. A lot of my first songs were about living in a small town. Growing up in Texas was very strange. Um, I was like one of just a few Asian kids at my school. So it's just a lot of white people. I'd, I'd always kind of felt like in between or like slightly out of place, I guess. Never went to a single party, never did anything. I guess that's kind of just life. You're just constantly trying things and making mistakes and seeing where you fit. Um, I think I was probably spent my entire life trying to figure out where I fit. I doubt I'll ever fit anywhere. I've never like dated anyone or done any of that. Ironic for someone who writes songs about love all the time. Are you coming? Okay, I just have to just have to pack my clothes now. So I think. I think necessary for for New York. Leather jacket, right? I mean, right? Um, also maybe like, you know, like walking around, like a little tote bag, like. <laughs> I mean, definitely gonna have to bring this boy. This is where I write all of my songs, right here. I literally sit, hunch back like this, and I <laughs> It's always been like this. Um, obviously I'm writing in this bed, but before this bed it was in my other bed, and before that it was in my college bed, and then before that it was my childhood bed. Like it's always just been bed. It's been like a very sacred place for me. Oh, I've been really, really, really into corduroys lately. I have so many pairs of corduroys. These ones are brown. Definitely gonna pack those, but I'm probably gonna regret it when I'm like sweating to my ankles. Hello. Welcome in, welcome. Still kind of getting all of my boxes and things. Um, I'm just renting for now, so this, this furniture did not just like magically appear from a suitcase. It's nice to be somewhere new. Everything's terrifying. I am scared of everything, but it's nice. Yeah, this is my new bed where I'm going to just lay and write songs for the next few months. Uh, I haven't written a song yet because I'm too scared to. That first song, Jinxing, I'm always afraid that like if I write my first song in a certain space and it's bad, then I'm just gonna write bad songs for the entire time. So I'm waiting till I have a really good idea. Let's see if she survived. She did. So if I have my guitar somewhere and if I have like one suitcase, I like that's that is home for the time being. It's I'm not that um 
not that picky about stuff. I am a homebody in my soul, but I've just had to figure out how to make places feel like home. So I'm perfectly fine right now. This is normal. I'll be fine. I just need to get used to going outside. Cause that's really intense. Outside is so intense in New York. The public, the general public, it's a lot. The main thing I've noticed here is there's just so many people to like witness. It really makes you realize how insignificant you are in a good way. It makes you feel kind of less like, I don't know, like everything matters so much. I'd really like to get a plant here. I feel like it needs a plant. It's just begging for a little, you know, just a little something. Make it feel like home, make it feel nice. Then I can sit here. Wonder, wonder, wonder why I came. Oh my God, there's two little birds right now. They're in love. I've always been so confused in my own body that I think I've always been watching people kind of trying to figure out how I'm supposed to exist. Like, how am I supposed to sit? And how am I supposed to talk? And like, all those types of things. I watch people all the time, but I, I really love watching couples. I think they're so interesting. Because when two people know each other that well, even like with really close friends, they have all these like quirks and all these little things. They know so much about each other. If you were someone I was watching, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, I mean, it's, it's almost all peripheral, you know? You don't get the validation of knowing that I'm looking at you. That defeats the purpose. I think that the difference between never being in love and still having your heart broken is, I think you, I think the definition of love is reciprocated. I think if you love someone fully, they love you back. But I think you can be in love with someone and them not love you back, and that's not considered love to me. Which is why I've been in love with people, and I've been like, I'm in love with you, and they're like, hmm, good for you, but I'm not in love with you. <laughs> So that's why I've had my heart broken, but I've never been in love. Think that maybe you'll find love in New York. I think I'll find love in the place that I least expect it. And I think I'll find it when I'm not looking for it. So who knows? Maybe it's right here. I think my love of plants began kind of early in life, I'm obsessed with biology. I love science so much and plants are incredible. And I remember my first plant that I bought was a fern and it died. Um, because ferns aren't supposed to live in Texas. That's just not their vibe. Over here, there is a money tree. It's supposed to bring prosperity. We have similar vibes, the poof on the top, you know, quite similar. Do you see the resemblance? Cause I do. I don't think I have any expectations for New York at all. I just kind of feel like I needed to move just to make myself uncomfortable. I was getting really comfortable in LA and I just felt like I needed to kind of destroy my life a little bit in a good way. Oh, I'd be highly surprised if I like magically fell in love in the next week, but who knows? Um, <laughs> and I think mostly I just, um, make, I'm just excited to kind of be uncomfortable and be in a new space and hopefully have a few new things to write about. <sighs> Yay, plant. Just you and me, plant. You and me against the world. I feel curious about this next phase of my life. I think I'm perfectly fine with it being horrible. I'm perfectly fine with it being incredible. I just want change and I'm excited for all the feelings and strange things that will happen for the next few years of my life.
Mic, 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 mic. Hello. <laughs> I've been training for the Olympics. It's been exhausting. I'm so sore. Simone Biles. Oh, sorry, Simone's calling. Hey, Simone, yeah, you want me to take your slot? No, 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 I need my own place. Thank you very much. She's so needy. Oh, <laughs>